Born in 1860 in Austria, Gustav Mahler grew up in a climate of great social and cultural change in Europe. As a young boy, he served as a chorister in a local Catholic church as well as taking piano lessons from the choir master there. Through this, his parents became aware of his exceptional talent in music and this eventually led to his admission into the Vienna Conservatory and Vienna University. After graduating, he was appointed to conducting posts in some of the best opera houses in Europe, from the Hungarian Royal Opera to the still-famous Vienna State Opera. He was considered by his contemporaries a full-time conductor with only a part-time interest in composition. He was kept so busy by his conducting engagements that he was only able to devote the summer months to composition while on vacation in the countryside. As a result, Mahler's works were largely unappreciated by musicians until American conductor and composer Leonard Bernstein championed them as music director of the New York Philharmonic. Bernstein was known to be irritated by his feeling that fellow composers did not consider him a true composer, while fellow conductors did not consider him a true conductor either. And it is this parallel between the two that could have contributed to Bernstein's affinity for the works of Mahler. Posthumously, Mahler's influences can be heard in a range of composers, from John Adams to John Williams from Richard Strauss to Gilbert and Sullivan, and from Leonard Bernstein to Andrew Lloyd Webber. Mahler's second symphony is only one of his nine monumental works in that genre. The idea of what a symphony could be had been growing ever since Haydn and Mozart formed it in the 18th century. Every generation after seemed to have a composer who gave this idea new life, from Ludwig van Beethoven's Third, Fifth, and Ninth Symphonies, to Hector Berlioz's Symphonie Fantastique, to Johannes Brahms's four contributions to the genre. Each composer enlisted his own design on the architecture of the symphonic organism. Mahler took the next step in this process and combined his predecessor's ideas into his own works, he utilized Brahms's extension of conservative forms, Berlioz's numerous orchestral forces, and paid an overt homage to Beethoven in his use of chorus and vocal soloists. Mahler's own contribution to this genre was exhibited in his desire to express thoughts and ideas of the human soul through music, hence the title of the Second Symphony, Resurrection. Written in five movements, the symphony is divided into three parts. Part 1 contains only the first movement, and it is described by the composer as asking the question, is there life after death? Part 2 contains the second movement, a Lendler, a popular German dance at the time, and the third movement, a Scherzo, subtitled, with quiet flowing movement. Part 3 contains the very short and introductory fourth movement, which features an alto solo singing text from Das Naven Wunderhorn, or the Youth's Magic Horn. Closing part three and the entire work is the expansive last movement, which is written for orchestra, chorus, soprano and alto soloists, and an ensemble which performs offstage. Over the course of the symphony, Mahler sought to explore through music the transmigration of the soul. And this step towards the expression of metaphysical concepts is what bridged music from the late Romantic period into the modern. <laughs>